Today is Pearl Harbor Day, December 7th. It is a date that is etched in my mind. Truly, it is a date that shall live in infamy. But I want to start here in 1898. It may seem strange, but as I progress, it will all pull together. It was 1898. The Spanish had Cuba, and we wanted it. The Maine, a large battleship, blew up in the Havana Harbor, and we blamed Spain. It had to be true. It was in all the papers. America was furious. We got to go to war. Teddy Roosevelt got to ride up San Juan Hill, and we got Cuba. How cool is that? The only downside? The Spanish did not blow up the Maine. No one knows who, why it blew up. Either we did it ourselves, or it was just an accident. But we got Cuba, and no one was the wiser. Fast forward to May 7, 1915, and the sinking of the Lusitania. World War I was raging across Europe and had been for nigh on two years. J.P. Morgan had been a busy man. That's J.P. Morgan Jr. He had been selling bonds, a lot of British war bonds, to American banks. There was a vast fortune tied up in British victory. And the bad news, the British were losing. And without U.S. intervention, there was going to be trouble. That simply could not happen. The British could not lose. In steps President Woodrow Wilson. He was hat-picked to be president by those who would become the Council on Foreign Relations, the CFR, in 1921. He had a handler named Edward Mandel House. He was an operative for the bankers, the bankers who would become the CFR. As Wilson ran for re-election on the platform, he kept us out of war, House was negotiating with the British to get us into the war. People in the day joked that they were really co-presidents. Those truly in the know understood that House was the one calling the shots. Everyone in power knew the Lusitania was loaded with war materiel, and the Germans vowed to sink her, even taking out ads in major U.S. newspapers, most of which got quashed. The appeals went all the way to the White House. Silence. The Lusitania would sail on schedule to the fate that waited her. As she approached England, Lord of the Admiralty, Winston Churchill, did something odd. He withdrew the military escort that was to see the Lusitania through the waters patrolled by German submarines. The Lusitania was sunk, and America was once again outraged. We were manipulated again into going to war. The doughboys trained and deployed, and they suffered and died. Are you seeing a pattern? By war's end, there were 116,516 U.S. casualties and 15 million to 19 million men in total died. That brings us to our subject for today, the surprise attack on Pearl Harbor. That was no surprise, except to those who fought and died, and the country that, along with them, was betrayed. Everything I am going to share with you today, the key elements, those pertaining directly to Pearl Harbor, I learned from this man, Robert B. Stennett, and his book, Day of Deceit. It is a must-read for anyone who cares about the history of their country and the truth. History is written by the tyrants that control it. In school, we were taught that Franklin Delano Roosevelt was a great man and one of the greatest presidents. A careful examination of the facts tells us a different tale. He was a banker, originally, whose business enterprises were involved in a long list of shady dealings. He was hat-picked to be president by the leaders of the Council on Foreign Relations, who paid off his debt on his club in Warm Springs, Georgia, made him governor of New York, and then 
president. He was going to do as he was told. The New Deal it was simply the implementation of the ideas set forth by the CFR in their journal, Foreign Affairs. What a coincidence. There was an eight-point action plan. It is called the McCollum Memo. It was written by Lieutenant Commander Arthur H. McCollum, and basically, it was all about how to goad Japan into attacking the United States. It detailed how if you cut Japan off from the resources they needed, they would have to lash out. They would have no choice. It went into great detail. We'll save that for another day. But we only have this information thanks to Robert Stennett and the Freedom of Information Act. This is Takeo Yashikawa. He was a Japanese spy stationed at Pearl Harbor. We know who he is because the FBI was following him around Hawaii and reporting on his every movement. These are examples of the code the Japanese used to communicate between their admiralty and their fleet. They also used it to communicate with Takeo Yashikawa. We broke the code long before Pearl Harbor, our code breakers were so good, our people were decoding the messages faster than the Japanese. Now, the history books lie about that. More accurately, they are mistaken. FDR did not let anyone know we could read the Japanese code before or after war broke out. That would have been a hard thing to explain. How do we know? Well, Robert Stennett found it. The truly horrible part of all this the information about the spies and the code, neither Admiral Horace Kimmel, naval commander at Pearl Harbor, nor General Walter Short, army commander at Pearl Harbor, were ever given any of the information, and we would never have known about it had not Robert Stennett uncovered it. In a horrible injustice to these faithful servants of their country, they were made the scapegoats for this infamy. To say the least, the rest of their lives were very difficult. Having the code, well, we could track their fleet as they prepared for the mission, and we did. And what is more, we tracked them all the way across the Pacific, right up to when they were ready to launch. We literally had real-time tracking of their fleet movements, all the way to Pearl Harbor and all the way back. And FDR, he made certain our carriers the best line of defense and most valuable naval assets were out to sea. The result of this treason and treachery, our men at Pearl Harbor were, in every sense of the word, sitting ducks. It was a slaughter. The damage was extensive. It was truly horrible in every sense of the word. But in the end, FDR, the Council on Foreign Relations, the bankers, they all got what they wanted. And FDR got to make the speech that secured his place in history. 2008 sailors, 109 Marines, 218 soldiers, 68 civilians, in total, 2,403 dead. Betrayed by the president who had solemnly sworn to defend them. Then, he had the unmitigated gall to stand before the whole world and say this. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. This is a very emotional topic for me. My grandfather fought and almost died in that war. My parents would share with me the fear they knew as little children as that war raged across the globe. And today will be the first time 
No survivors from the USS Arizona will be in attendance at the memorial services held. They are 96 and 97 years old, respectively, and no longer able to travel. But the oil still bubbles up from the Arizona. It slowly dissipates over time, as do the memories of the loved and lost. The elites held sway. FDR had his day. The bankers, who always pull the strings, got paid and by war's end, 418,500 Americans were dead. And global fatalities from World War II, the estimates are from between 50 million to 85 million dead. The elites who write history and run the education system lock down the facts and create the heroes they want us to revere. In a just and fair world, these men, like their evil masters behind the scenes, would be derided as the perpetrators of evil that they are. As I discussed this topic with my wife, she reminded me of something. With the poor state of education and the paucity of reading real books, fewer and fewer people know even the basics of World War II history. That is sad on so many levels, not the least of which, if we fail to learn the lessons of history, we will live it again and again. Satan is many things. Original is not one of them. He finds something that works and sticks with it. He repeats the same lie again and again and again. He does that theologically. So also, those who serve him in this world and do his bidding will employ the same deceptions again and again. The same lie, the same ruse that worked in 1898 with the Maine, in 1915 with the Lusitania, and Pearl Harbor in 1941. And so powerful is their hold on power and information that if you call these operations what they are, your channel gets shut down. You cannot say these words that are on your screen. They are forbidden. Welcome to the information age. So we move on to the Gulf of Tonkin. This precipitation to war, or more accurately, a police action, that got us into Vietnam is so dubious that there was probably no fighting at all. They made it up out of whole cloth. We can go straight to the Twin Towers, so poetically dubbed the Pearl Harbor of our day. Just another deception. Another means to get us to do what we would not otherwise do. The result, what did they accomplish? We got government surveillance on a level our forefathers would have thought unimaginable. We got more government power and less freedom with the Homeland Security Administration and the Transportation Safety Administration. And oh yes, we got 17 years of uninterrupted war and strife and death and carnage. We were only in World War I for two years. We were only in World War II for four years. They lead us by the nose, more accurately, the eyes. And they get us to do exactly what they want us to do. They will continue to do the same things until we wake up and force them to stop. Because if we do not stop them, they will keep right on going and going. Part of the aversion to accepting that so many of these awful things that we're seeing today could be done by those in power, our government, comes from thinking these atrocities are too evil. That is where historical perspective comes in play. If they did not bat an eye at this in World War I, 15 to 19 million dead, nor were they deterred in the least by this, 50 million to 85 million dead in World War II, what would make you think that they have a moment hesitation to do any of this. I know a good bit of this information has been shocking. 
Some of it seems insane. That is because it is insane. That does not mean it is not true. Dig in. Don't take my word for it. Dig in. Get educated. Go to our website at www.decodingthedeception.com and there you can go to our knowledge base and type in the topics that I have shared in this video. We've got the YouTube videos. They pop up right there in the website. You can watch them there. Go to the recommended reading tab and buy Robert B. Stennett's Day of Deceit. I just looked. He passed away just a month ago on November 6th, 2018. On top of being a journalist, he was a decorated sailor serving himself in World War II. I hope that you have found this video informative. I hope that you found it maddening. But more than that, I hope that you found it motivating. God bless and have a great day. That concludes our broadcast for today. Please leave your comments below. We love to hear from you. Your feedback is very important to us. There is a link on the screen with our website address. We invite you to check it out. Links to support our work are in the description below. Your support is what keeps us going. This is Matthias 76. Together, we are decoding the deception.